Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going to have some fun. We're going to be drawing some derpy animals. I asked you guys in one of my posts on my Instagram what would be your favorite animal to see as a derpy animal. And we ended up with a pretty big list. So I am going to go down the list and I'm just going to draw really silly ridiculous animals and we'll, we'll try to get us through as many as we can before the video gets too long and then yeah so let's see what we can come up with shall we so i think the one that was voted on the most was a sloth so let's start with that first we're gonna pop up trusty google over here we're going to look up an image of a sloth. And let's try to find one where you can actually see the animal properly. I want to see one where you can see the whole body. There you go. That one works. And copy image. We're going to go on to any design program. In my case, I like using Manga Studio or Clip Studio Pro. Clip Studio Paint Pro. That's the other name for it. So, there you go. We are going to go on to our layer and let's draw a sloth. Let's see. So, I'm going to talk to you guys through how I normally break down shapes. And hopefully you guys actually get a little understanding of how I break down animals and stuff. So, for example, in this one, it's pretty simple. Like, he has... Uh, face that's kind of like an oval he has a little beanbag shaped body and the legs are kind of like socks as well as the arms you know so let's take those concepts and these aren't gonna be super refined drawings by the way these are gonna be like pretty rough just so we have time to get through as many as possible so in this case, I'm making the head a little bit bigger because it makes the cartoony aspect of it a little bit better. Uh, the arms will be kind of like this. He's going to have his long nails. Boom. Okay, his little legs are going to be like this. He's also going to have his leg, like claws or nails or whatever you want to call them. We're going to erase just a little bit. Just enough so it doesn't look too sketchy. Okay, back to our pen tool. They have a forward for like phasing nose. And this is where you get to have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna make him blue. He's gonna have his little stripes. He has a little face mask aspect to him. Mm. More lines underneath the eyes just means like stressed out or you know distressed. Or confused so I like doing those whenever I draw really drippy animals and his mouth is gonna be like this but we're gonna exaggerate it a little and we're gonna give him a tongue there okay and now we just clean it up a little bit
And let's give it a slightly, a little bit of color, just so it looks like. So we can distinguish the stripes. Let's make this bigger. Like I said, we're not going to worry too much about like refining too much detail because I want to get through as many as possible. Let's give the nose a little bit. And he has a little bit lighter. Okay, then he's going to have his pink tongue. And well, I think that's pretty much it for him. All right, so I think we have finished the sloth. Let's give it a little bit of shadow. So it looks like he's sitting down. There you go. Derp. <laughs> uh, now it should be a little bit darker. <laughs> uh, okay. So we have our sloth. Boom. Let's merge those two together. Put it aside. And let's erase this one because we don't need that. Let's go down the list. So now we are going to draw the next voted on the most was an alligator. Let's find us an alligator. Doody doody doo. Alligator. Alligator. I can't spell. Right, let's see. Images. We are going to go with. Hmm. There you go. Let's go with that one. View image. We're just going to copy the image. Copy. Paste. Um, sorry if you guys can hear that dog outside, it's the neighbor's dog, and he is very loud and obnoxious, and I absolutely hate it when he barks when I'm trying to make a video, but it's not like I can stop him. So, in this one, this body shape, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more elongated, it's not necessarily just a beanbag shape. So, let's do the same thing we did with the other one, shall we? Let's kind of break down the shape the head is kind of circular with these two little elements the neck has its own big shape and then the tail has its own really big shape Boom. okay so with those into consideration let's start drawing an alligator so we're just gonna loosely and see how I'm like actually adding dimension to the shapes. In this case, it's more like this. The eyes sit on top. So I was just gonna give a little indication of that. The neck kind of drops down, and then the body. And since we don't want to run out of space, we're just going to curl the body up, the tail that way. Just going to give it some, some leggies, some feet, the belly, and then... And then they have these little like scales that look really cool. And then you can use those same little like details to make it so it looks like it's going into perspective. 
make it look like like the tail is curling that way. Okay, so we have that. Have a body. Let's just draw some teeth. They don't have like the teeth don't really go in a general order. They just kind of like they just have a lot of teeth. Okay, so we're gonna do that. For this one, I'm just gonna drop the opacity, and I wanna actually sketch it out a little bit more since I did it super rough. Okay, so let's make this a little bit smaller, and let's see, nose, eyes, therapy face. Uh, and then draw the body. Let's see. How does that go? Okay. So it has like swirlies. It's not necessarily like a straight line. So let's keep it like that. This is where anatomy of actual like shapes comes into play too. See how I'm not connecting these lines? If I connected it, it would look fine. But if you don't, it gives it a little bit of depth going into the neck. Because, you know, skin doesn't always connect all the way. Teeth. There you go. And he has like scales and stuff, but all you gotta do when you're quick drawing, just give indications that it's there. You don't have to draw every single one. Just draw an indication. Little tiny textures. Okay, and then the little bumpy things. Like I said, at this point, I'm not really concerning myself with much detail. I just want to show you guys how I normally do concept work for myself. And hopefully it helps you guys understand that you don't have to do every single drawing incredibly detailed. It can literally just be little quick doodles. And then, you know, if you wanted to go in and refine the idea because you liked it, then you can do that. And that goes for every single type of art. You should always work on some concept work. You know, nice and loose like this. And then go in and worry about the finishing details later. Like I'm not worrying about how many fingers it anatomically has because I didn't really look that up. But you guys can get an idea of how quickly you guys can get an idea down. And let's draw a little bird because alligators normally have little birds. There you go. <laughs> De derp. Okay. So now we have an alligator. So let's go down the list again. The next one is a kiwi. That's the next one that got more than one, more than one vote. So we have our alligator. Let's get rid of this one, and let's get rid of this. Boom. So all we need is our final file. Okay. So kiwi. 
image. Kiwi. Oh, there it is. There's one. Oh, it's a little bird. It's a little ball of fur. Oh, is it fur or feathers? I don't know. But we don't really need to I will worry catch about you guys in the next video. Feathers or because we are just looking at shapes. This is one thing that is super important for all you guys to realize. Whenever you try to draw something, make sure that you're not looking at the details of it. Make sure that you the first thing you do should be to look at the general shapes of the animal, the building, car, whatever it is that you guys are trying to copy or trying to draw. If you guys can generalize this into shapes, all the details come into play later. So, it has a super big body, it has no tail, it kind of connects, and it has a semi-long beak. Right, so you already start seeing the general shape of it, and it has like really big feet for its body. So there's one foot. There's another. Okay, now we can start going into details. And for details like fur and and hair, I literally just like doing little strokes like this. Just make sure that you see how the fur is flowing. So you can actually get the look to not just look like squiggles. The fur is flowing in this direction, that direction, this direction. Like I said, you don't have to fill up the whole thing. Right now we're just working on the little quick concepts. Okay, so we have that. We're gonna go into the beak. The beak actually is surrounded by the little fur texture. So you gotta make sure that it's like going from behind it. Okay, let's see. Oh man. And it doesn't seem like the opening is here, so I'm just gonna little a little indication of that there. So a little bit of shadow, so it has a little bit of ground to stand on. And derpy eyes. That. <laughs> Some of these are coming out kind of funny. Okay, and since we finished that one pretty quickly, we can just eyedropper some of the colors here. And let's just give it a qu some quick color. I'm not gonna worry too much about coloring inside the lines. I'm just gonna give it a general idea. Uh, let's go with white for the eyes. Since we're cartoonifying these, we're not really trying to draw like a realistic version of it. That, and it has like gray feet. And the last final touch is to give it oop, some of those little lines from her feathers or I honestly don't know if they're feathers or hair if you guys know just leave it in the comments so I can actually know it's kind of interesting 
Also, they don't look to be too big. They're tiny, huh? There you go. Cool. There you go. Kiwi. Kiwi. Okay. And just for size comparison, we're going to draw a little brooch. Okay, so Kiwi has been drawn. Boom. Next one. See, all the other ones only have one vote. So we are going to go with... Uh, I draw bears all the time. I don't want to draw bears. Um, let's go with an armadillo. The armadillo is on the list. Mm -hmm. And we will, you know, we'll just cut it out. Like, that'll have this be the last one. Okay. Oh, my doors are so cute. Okay, we're going to go with this one. So, copy, paste. Oh, man, our Madillas are so very interesting. I wonder how tough their actual exterior is. Anyways. All right, we're going to do the same thing. We are going to really quickly break down the general shape. So it's like a box with a square, big ears. And this is like a jelly bean with little lines. And the legs are little tiny stubs with a segmented tail. Okay. So we're going to reduce that and uh, let's just draw this guy. Mm. Let's make him a little bit more stylized. So as long as we have the bean bag or the jelly bean shape, right? And it has a little opening for here It kind of curls around the neck. So you got to see, th draw through your image. You know, just imagine if that was like here and then the neck would come in from here. So the head actually starts a little bit farther back. So relatively flat with a little bit of a curvature in the bottom. Look at how the ear bends. Ears with animals, it actually matters a lot. It can keep something from looking like a rabbit. If, you know, it's not a rabbit. Don't give it bare ears if it's supposed to be, I don't know, a mouse. Or anything like that. It just helps to actually pay attention to the little tiny details. Okay, I'm gonna give it. I like giving big feet to animals. It makes them look more puppyish. You know how puppies have like super big feet for for their bodies. I like doing that with most of my animals. One fun little trick that you can do whenever you do really quick drawing is you see how this one has a little bit of light, but this one right here doesn't. If you just darken it in the drawing, give it a really heavy contrast, it'll look like it's pushed back into the into the background. A lot of comic book artists do that. A lot of manga people do that. You know, just a little quick hint. Whenever something's farther in the background, or if it's something that's really in the foreground, I, random tip. If, you know, for example, if we drew something like this, right, and we filled it with black, right, it, it can, let's, let's give a better example. Let's say we fill 
this shit up. We fill that up, and now it looks like it's in the foreground, right? But if we draw it in the background, you can also tell that it's like in distance. If you draw something in front of it that's a little bit lighter, it just looks like it's going progressively darker into the background because the farther you, away you are, the more cast shadows that get, you know, shown. And that is just like basic comic book stuff that you should, you know, well, that you can read in like comic, like that I've picked up from just reading tons of books about like comics and you know, animation and perspective and all that stuff. Uh, it has little tiny circles as detail. I'm not even going to complete the circles. It's just going to fade into the top. This little segments kind of go one into the other. So if you give that detail by just segmenting it like that, it'll look a little bit better. But I didn't follow the shape because I suck. And its mouth, it's weird. It's like, it just goes underneath into the snout, into a flat forehead, into the nostril. And it also has the little armor looking segments. And, you know, obviously the face is where you get to stylize it. So, I'm just going to make it like a floating eye guy. Dude. The beauty of cartoons, guys. Uh, even though I am stating that you should follow certain rules, there really isn't any rules when it comes down to cartooning. You know, you could literally just draw this super quickly and just give it like, two eyes on the same side you know it could be something as simple as that or you can go with something more complex like this and then I'm guessing he would like roll up into a ball like this right and then show the ears because you know why not <laughs> There you go. And he would be rolling. Pew, 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 pew. But in this case, it's floating eyes. Uh, I want to make him happy, though. So his mouth would open up from the bottom. I'm going to give it... I don't know if they have teeth, but I'm just going to give it, like two buck teeth there and he's going to have his tongue hanging out but his tongue would be coming from inside like this <laughs> derp little drool coming down you know little pools <laughs> And there you go, all the tail. Oh, whenever you draw tails, remember that they're cylinders. So it's you gotta make sure that, especially when they're segmented like this, that you draw through the object. The same thing that we did here to make sure that it actually looks like it has depth. You segment it and then you can go back in and erase the one, the little sections that you're not supposed to see. But at least you know that it's going in the right perspective. And it helps a ton. Little tiny details like that help. And has little hairs, like armpit hairs. And then, then these have like little lines like this. Right? Yay! Yay! 
<laughs> All right, so let's look back at the animals that we do today. Okay, that's this. This merges into that. Okay, so this one's empty. Okay, so we made a sloth really quickly, super derpy. We made a alligator. Oh, I deleted the reference. Oh, dumb. Uh, an armadillo and a kiwi. Well, I think the video is around 30 minutes long already, and I don't want to keep you guys here all night. I hope that you guys actually enjoyed the video and, you know, me showing you guys a real life interpretation of how I go about drawing my animals. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys can tell that I draw a ton of animals. And most of the time, they're like a little perverted animals looking at a cute girl or something like that. But it's the same concept. Just take, you know, reference image. And then, you know, once you actually break down the character, you can start, you know, moving them around and learning how they move. Let's see. You know, just like start learning how different animals are shaped. And you guys will be able to do tons of animals in no time. Because it's all about muscle memory. And building that mental library. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't boring. Uh, I think it's the first video that I do like this. So let me guys let me know if you guys actually enjoyed videos like this, and I'll be more than happy to do these every Tuesday. Um, have another time lapse Thursday coming on on Thursday. It'll be a little bit of a challenge for you guys. I'm gonna call out everyone out there so you guys can actually do it with me. And if you guys like what I do, like and subscribe buttons right there, back there. You know, click the notification icon if you guys want to know when I up upload stuff. Normally it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes Saturdays, you know, I'm still trying to figure out my routine, but I will leave you guys with that. I hope you guys have a wonderful night and I will catch you guys in the next video. Later. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you guys want to see some more, you guys can click right here or right here. And you guys can check out a ton more videos from me that will teach you guys how to become a better artist. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.